top five things you need to do if you get bitten by a snake. Snakes usually bite defensively rather than actively attacking humans. And in Queensland, it's as common for people to be bitten around the house as it is out in the bush or other wild areas. If you're ever bitten by a snake, keeping these tips in mind might just save your life. Number one, call an ambulance immediately. You should treat any snake bite as an emergency, regardless of whether you think the snake was venomous or not. Many snakes look similar, and if you wait to see if you feel symptoms of venom poisoning, it might be too late by the time you get help. You need to stay as still as possible rather than running for a phone. Use a mobile phone or have someone else go and call for help. Number 2. Don't panic and don't move. While it's easier said than done, staying calm and still after a snake bite can help slow down the spread of venom in your body. If you've been bitten by a poisonous snake, not moving might just save your life. It is a myth that a snake venom gets straight into your bloodstream after a bite. Instead, it moves from your lymphatic system. Lymph is a fluid in your body that contains white blood cells. Unlike blood, which is pumped around your body continuously, your lymph moves when you move your limbs. If you can stay calm and still, you can prevent the venom in your lymph traveling further into your body. If you're sure the snake has moved away after biting you and you're not in danger of being bitten again, remain where you are rather than walking to get help. If you're with other people, they shouldn't move you at all. But start administering first aid where you are. Take long, deep breaths to help calm yourself down. And remember that the odds are in your favor. It's very rare for people to die after being bitten by a snake, especially if they follow first aid steps. Number 3. Leave the snake alone. Don't try to identify, catch, injure, or kill the snake. You're likely to come off second best. At the hospital, staff has access to a range of tests that can help them determine the likely snake which you have been bitten by, enabling them to give you the most appropriate treatment. Number 4. Apply a pressure immobilization bandage and splint. Most snake bites occur on a limb, so legs, feet, arms, and hands are most commonly affected. If you've been bitten on a limb, applying a pressure immobilization bandage can stop the venom from moving through your lymphatic system. If you've got a pad or even a piece of plastic like cling wrap, put it over the bite site to either soak up or protect the venom for later testing. Apply a pressure immobilization bandage by following these steps. Use an elasticized roller bandage that is 10 to 15 centimeters wide. Roll bandage over bite site. Then apply a second elasticized roller bandage, starting just above the fingers or toes and moving upwards on the bitten limb as far as the bandage will reach. Apply the bandage as tightly as possible to the limb. If you don't have a bandage handy, any stretchy material will do, and torn up t-shirts, stockings, or other fabric can be used as a bandage. Once the bandage is on, mark the bite site on the bandage with a pen or other substance that will leave a mark. If you've got nothing else on you, putting a little mud or dirt on the bandage will work. Then. Splint the limb to keep it still. Any straight object will do. A stick, rolled up newspaper, or even firmly rolled up clothes or tarps can all work. Fix the splint in place by securing it to the limb with bandages or other material. If you've been bitten on your head, neck, or torso, you don't need to put on a pressure immobilization bandage. Number 5. Don't wash, suck, 
cut or tourniquet the bite. There are a lot of old methods of treating snake bites that are now known to cause more harm than good. Washing the snake bite site can wash off venom that the hospital staff may be able to use to identify the type of snake that bit you. You should also keep clothing from around the bite site because additional movement can cause venom to more readily move into the bloodstream. Do not suck or cut the bite area. Do not apply a tourniquet to the limb because this can be dangerous. There are two types of snake bites, dry or venomous bites. A dry bite is when the snake strikes but no venom is released. Dry bites will be painful and may cause swelling and redness around the area of the snake bite. Because you can't tell if a snake bite is a dry bite, always assume that you have been injected with venom and manage the bite as a medical emergency. Once medically assessed, there is usually no need for further treatment such as with anti-venoms. Many snake bites in Australia do not result in envenomation, and so they can be managed without anti-venom. Venomous bites, on the other hand, are when the snake bites and releases venom, a poison into a wound. Snake venom contains poisons that are designed to stun, numb, or kill other animals. Symptoms of a venomous bite include severe pain around the bite, swelling, bruising, or bleeding from the bite, bite marks on the skin, and these might be obvious puncture wounds or almost invisible small scratches. Other symptoms are swollen and tender glands in the armpit or groin of the limb that has been bitten, tingling, stinging, burning or abnormal feelings of the skin, feeling anxious, nausea, dizziness, blurred vision, headache and breathing difficulties, and much more. In Australia, there are about two deaths a year from venomous snake bites. Identification of venomous snakes can be made from venom present on clothing or the skin using a venom detection kit. For this reason, do not wash or suck the bite or discard clothing. Do not try to catch or kill the snake to identify it because medical services do not rely on visual identification of the snake species. Anti-venom is available for all venomous Australian snake bites.